everybody. Welcome along to episode 53 of Percussion Discussion. Um, as I always do when I start, I always ask, please check out our social media. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, our YouTube channel. And as always, I ask if you wouldn't mind, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. It really helps us and it ensures that you don't miss any of the interviews that we've done or that we have coming up for you. We wouldn't want that to happen. Um, if you prefer to listen on the go, you can find all of our conversations in podcast form on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Now, uh, the name of our podcast is Percussion Discussion. As of yet, we haven't had a single percussionist on it. Uh, we're about to rectify that today. And boy, what a percussionist to start with. Um, a gentleman with an enviable CV. Um, he's played for Dominic Miller for, for some years. And again, for some years, he's played for one of the biggest stars in the world, Sting. A gentleman uh, originating from Morocco, moved over to Germany, and his career has just gone one way, that way. It gives me great pleasure to introduce the lovely Mr. Rani Krieger. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for the invitation. I feel really honoured. Oh, well, and, and I'm, I'm a little embarrassed, really, because as you uh, possibly know, um, the, the, our series is called Percussion Discussion, and you're <laughs> the first percussionist that we've had on it. So I, I hang my head in shame. I apologise about that. So, um, well, well, since I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't make so much difference between drums and percussion, it's all the same kind of substance. Exactly. I guess uh, your, your, your title is perfectly chosen. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, like I say, it's great to have you and uh, I really appreciate it. And before we go any further, I have to uh, thank our mutual friend, Steve Barney, for, uh, for yeah. connecting us. So thank you, Steve. <laughs> yes, indeed. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> A little in-joke there, which I know nothing about and I, I don't want to know. So there we go. Um, so look, we're, we're in, hopefully, we're getting to the end of these kind of strange times now, Rani, which... For anyone in music, uh, who's a musician or in the arts, it's been a tough 18 months, hasn't it? And um... It is tough. It is tough. And uh, more on the psychological part of it, it just freaks you out because you don't have, uh, um, you know, you don't have an idea how it's going to yeah. change and there is no no plans uh, that that's the that's the most difficult part of it because uh, the politicians are trying to 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 get instant instantly uh, and trying to explain and react but no one has really yeah. perfectly uh, made the statement how it's going to look in a few months or or next year or whatever and that sure. freaks me out but hey it is what it is yeah and uh, we kind of uh, try to do the best out of it and hope uh, we can go back on stages again and watch uh, the audience sweating, smiling, happy, dancing. This is, this is our purpose. This is what uh, our job to, uh, to go on stage and make people happy. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, yeah, it would be nice to have a date to aim for when they say this date is the date we all go back to the book. That's not going to happen. But but look, you know, right. we've been we've been locked down, but with technology and everything the way it is these days, most people have managed to keep busy uh, in one form or other. Have you managed to, to keep busy over the over the lockdown? Yes. Well, I uh, I, I tried to to go more toward teaching, mm -hmm. but uh, I was lucky to uh, to go back uh, and, and do session because I'm also a studio session player. Mm. I was uh, I was kind of remind me on the old days, you know, where we used to go a lot in the studio. And uh, since lots of bands, uh, they were not able to tour. The most of them were, were they were thinking the same. Let's go and uh, work on on the album or whatever. So I was busy with recording a lot, and was uh, myself producing or co-producing with other singer. One of them is from Morocco. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other friends I have, I work with, I co-produce music. She is from Switzerland. And also the first time in my life, I know it's going to sound really crazy. Uh, I was able to motivate myself and encourage myself to start and learn more about software, recording mm -hmm. software, because never get the time. 
yeah. to learn it. And also I started to learn Spanish. Wow. And I and I took a challenge to go for run. Since the last tour we did, I did with Dominic Miller before the 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 lockdown came, we started already running like one like would say every other day we would sure. run five kilometers i reach now 12 kilometers so i run every other day wow exactly that keeps my mind a little bit um still and um uh, not too much uh active yeah wow that's impressive i mean you know it's it's it would be way too easy to sit and watch Netflix every day, wouldn't it? And, and eat and just go, ah, oh, well, I'll just wait. But th- most people, I'm really glad to say, you, you, you know, mm. you mentioned about learning software. I think there's so many, mm. myself included, you know, I've, I've done yeah. the same and uh, I, still, I still don't know much about it, but I know a little <laughs> bit more than I did. <laughs> yeah, man, you get to motivate yourself. I also have children. I was doing more teaching here, you know, homeschool. Yeah, sure. Homeschooling and, uh, and uh, yeah, well, the day was completely short. Uh, if you want to learn and uh, take care and being a dad and being a, 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 a husband and you know it's uh it's quite it went really quick thank god yeah. in kind of, in one way yeah sure now there's one thing i noticed online that um i noticed by the socially distanced audience and that was the beethoven reloaded thing you did with inga um yeah was that i think that was was that last year from from, from yeah. memory that's that was a great concert to watch i mean i've only seen a short uh, a short section of it online but wow that it's was funny cool. to mention that because uh, you know i was with dominic uh, last year on the road january february and march sure we had we have 50 we had a tour of 50 gigs yeah we managed to do uh, 44 or 45 and then in Denmark, they threw out, uh, us out because this was the 13. I remember flying a strange day, flying from Copenhagen to uh, Cologne. And uh, I came in and uh, Inga was asked me before, but I, since I hadn't the time, I, uh, I, uh, I uh, recommended another friend of mine. But then since the pandemic started, she kind of insisted and asked me again. And I was glad she asked me. Yeah. So that that gave me like more opportunity to work. It was basically in uh, yeah, lockdown started mid-March. I was already starting to work with her in end of April, uh, yeah. May. Yeah. So we were kind of trying to get that um, um, version of Beethoven's music get get together the ideas and and play as a duo Mm. it it works so well doesn't it yeah it it really thank you well it's it's fun it's fun it's funny how uh beethoven beethoven so much groove oriented his music and um uh so so much syncopation and so many interesting rhythmical phrases Mm. inside inside the uh um Sorry, it was a kind of course. So many interesting rhythmical ideas and really, really creative and uh, beautiful. Oh, it's, it's just incredible. I mean, did that take a lot of work to put that together? Was there a lot of rehearsing for that? Well, you know, the, the work was um, not the music itself, but to get the two at- attitude, you know, someone like Inga who comes from the classical world yeah. and, and someone like me, who, who comes from the pop and more about the timing and micro timing and uh, being really very concerned about time and uh, and Inga of course uh, she is a classically uh, educated uh, piano player but uh, for them sometimes uh, the interpretation is very important and sometimes uh, they don't really pay so much attention like we do yeah. when it comes to timing and uh, and micro time yeah yeah this was the bit of work we had. Yeah, but it was—it just worked so well. Um, and I don't know how the purists um, took it, but the, I've read some of the comments, and it was all all yeah. very positive. I'm sure some people were going, "You can't, can't have percussion with this," but yeah, it yeah. worked beautifully. Well, you have the purists always. I mean, if you believe in that idea, you do it, and you have fun. Once you have fun, the audience will have fun too. So if uh, the purists. You, 
there is always someone who's going to yeah. get his ego involved and uh, put some uh, project, some some of his uh, ideas on you. That's fun. That's okay. That's uh, <laughs> We have enough room for that. It's yeah. always nice to hear uh, some critics. But, uh, you know, for us, it was fun. We, we're going to do it, actually. We're going to tour next year. Good. With, with that project and start in Germany first. Yeah. Because I noticed it, you, you, you played uh, very sympathetically. There was, I know, the, 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 uh, the section I saw, there was very few staccato sounds. They were all mm. quite light um, brushes and what have you. And it, it just it didn't, didn't get in the way. It was just lovely. Just really nice, nice and relaxing to listen to, actually. So. Well, thank you. Yeah, with the piano and the classic music in general, you have to, to, to be so much so uh, careful about the dynamics. Yeah, yeah. In uh, in in uh, contrast to that, I'm gonna start um, um, next week uh, rehearsal with a guy. He's very known also in the classic music, mm -hmm. classical music called uh, Martin Grubinger mm -hmm. from Austria. And we were, we were playing with the famous uh, uh, Berliner Philharmonie, the, 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 the orchestra. Yeah, wow. And we're doing John Williams music, which is going to be so loud and <laughs> dramatic. It doesn't get any better than that, I don't think. <laughs> wow. It's going to be lots of percussion on the stage. Yeah, amazing. Fantastic. So look, you've managed to keep busy, which is brilliant. You know, you've kept going. You have to, don't you? It's as simple as that. Yeah. So if you don't mind, can we can we kind of go back to the, the very beginnings of music for you, Rani, if that's OK? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So where did it where did it where did it all catch fire for you? Well, you know, it's. Uh, my mom told me that since I hit that five years old age, I was already burning for drumming and percussion and, and anything which sounds really good. I was always having it on my hands and I was basically drumming everywhere. And uh, I remember going even on the street with the boys and uh, I was obsessed with cars. And you know, the old cars, they sounded back really much better than now. <laughs> and uh, I was lucky being uh, born in such culture like in Morocco, which is like drumming is part of the day, every day. You know, when you start playing, no one's going to knock at your door and uh, uh, complain about the volume or, or the noise. T totally the opposite. You have the neighbor ladies, they're going to come and they want you to keep uh, drumming and they're going to start to dance. Fantastic. This is kind of reality in our culture. And my mom has a sense of rhythm. My dad has a sense of rhythm. Everyone. Hmm. But then to, to, uh, to uh, I, I went to school, primary school, and we had a teacher, he was more involved in the music. And uh, I was, I had a friend where we, we always jammed. And he know, knew about us uh, from other uh, uh, students. And uh, he asked us to, uh, to come and be part of the school, uh, musical school activities. And this is where it all started mm. from primary school. And then some bands have heard of me. They uh, asked me to do some, you know, jobs, wedding clubs. And, and uh, funny enough, back at the time, there was no internet, no YouTube, uh, not even uh, in Morocco, not even a possibility to go and buy album or cassette. Okay. You know, it's, it's, it's all we were listening to the songs in, in the radio and getting ready with the empty cassettes. If, if uh, the songs I need to learn comes, I would push the rec button. <laughs> yeah, for sure, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was, it was uh, kind of, uh, um, I, 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 I can't say hard because this was what it was. It was no other alternative. So it was fun. Yeah, yeah. It was basically fun. And then uh, I, uh, I kind of managed to do my uh, school education. And then at some point, I wanted to be an engineer. And since in Morocco back at the time, wasn't the possibility after the, after the, the uh, high school to go at, at university and study for engineering. So I had to leave Morocco and I chose Germany mm -hmm. because they were always in those kind of disciplines uh, really famous, like uh, electrical energy, and this is what I wanted to do. I came here, um, and then 
like musicians do, you're always going to meet some other um, uh, fellows or burn for music or just play for, for himself or for herself. So kind of uh, find a the band. They asked me to join them to do um, also um, the kind of world music. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's all started then from Germany, going from one band to the other, being recommended then for the next one. And and uh, in within a few years, I was I was really busy. And then it comes to the to the um, turning point where I had to make a decision: either um, con continuing and 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 uh, doing my degree and uh, and and becomes an engineer or totally go the other way. And I couldn't make that decision. And I remember one day I had an appointment with my professor to, uh, you know, for the final tease to, uh, to, 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 uh, to finalize my studies and stuff. And then uh, I had a strange accident. I wanted to uh, catch uh, quickly to, uh, to catch the, the subway. And I had to jump by jumping. The, the two level of the of the floor weren't uh, equal, so I fall down and and uh, completely injured my uh, my uh, my uh, my body, uh, especially in the uh, bottom part of my uh, legs. So I had to go to the hospital. It's strange enough, I always been sporty, and um, at, at that day. It has to happen, that accident. So I went to the hospital and I had enough time to think about my life and uh, what kind of decision I want uh, to make. And uh, I had so much problem with uh, uh, anesthesia after the surgery. When I came back to the hospital room, I had really lots of um, anxiety and uh, panic and, and uh, I was... Uh, not having a good uh, moments there. And it was one, one night when I had to wake up was around between 3 30 ish, 4 o'clock. I, I remember being so tired that I was like under drugs. And um, all of a sudden, you hear that voice and you start to listen to it. And the message in this voice was very simple like, uh, you, you are such an arrogant. Uh, humankind you have to, <laughs> you are born to do music go and do music and this was the the content of that voice and that funny enough this voice was mine i could recognize the voice was mine but it was a so such a strange situation i never forget that and i went back to sleep and i slept like a baby and for me it was clear the next day I made the decision already in my mind. I'm not going to go back and uh, be an engineer. I'm just going to fight for um, the will of my heart and uh, do music. Now, there we go. Um, I went in this house hospital like an engineer, and I came out as a professional musician. <laughs> but then the, the serious work started. Then where do I go? How can I... Can, can I practice and get to that level where I can call myself a professional musician and uh, and I had no teacher so I never studied music it's all self-taught yeah. and uh, I managed to get a room and in this room I started to practice and I made my schedule I start always at eight o'clock back at the time and till 12 when I had done kind of something to eat and work again. So I wanted to put that level, my expectation in my ears. I wanted to put it in my hands. Yeah. And this never stopped. It's still like that. I I hear higher expectation than I could afford to play. I'm still working on it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's 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 funny. But then from there, not long time, um, I started to teach. And in a few years after I made that decision, like two or three years, I get a call from a co-producer of Sting in my birthday, remember, on wow. December 21st, 2000. Yeah. It was Kippa, Kippa Eldridge. Mm -hmm. he, he told me, he told me, yeah, we get your number from Manu Kache and said, Manu Kache? I don't know Manu Kache <laughs> back at the time. I never met him. I never know him. Maybe I saw his face. But now we become friends, of course. But uh, 
back at the time, I didn't understand how Manu Kache has my number. It was like, and then I later I found out that uh, I recorded in one album, and one of those songs becomes in Paris kind of hit in the radio. Okay. And this journalist who liked the song was friend, close friend of Manu. Right. Manu was charged to look after a percussion player for the album of Sting called Sacred Love. Yes. And, and he liked my playing and he asked the journalist to get my contact. So it was kind of really weird circle. But uh, there you go. There I was in uh, Paris coming to the studio and uh, putting my stuff together. And I didn't know Sting much and I didn't know his music. Uh, sure. Uh, because I was more involved in world music and my my the music where I come from. I was in the studio and here comes Sting, the first uh, lovely guy, he really greeting me in Arabic. And wow! wow. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's just such a gentleman. I and he's still and I love him so much. And uh, yeah, it was planned actually to record only for the single back at the time called "Send Your Love." Yes. And, and I was playing and he enjoyed it. I could see him in the studio through the, the glass in the control room, having a good time and standing up and dancing. And then after that, I recorded that single. He asked me if I, uh, if I would record other songs. So, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they asked me to stay more days and um, I started to record the rest of the songs. And one of the songs become a Grammy, mm. uh, won a Grammy with, you know, if, I don't know if you remember the song, it's, uh, it's a duo, uh, Sting and Mary J. Blige. It's called uh, Whenever I Say Your Name. Yes, I do know it, yes. Yeah, well, I, I, I did that uh, small percussion on that, on that song and it was fun, it was fun. Because, uh, since... yeah, obviously Manu and, and Vinny on drums as well, I think on a, on a few of those tracks, if I've got that right. Yeah, you're right. Completely, both of them they were uh, they were involved in that album. Wow! And because uh, there's yeah. um, is now then I'm just trying to think because there's kind of um, there's kind of a world music thing going on in that album anyway, isn't there? It's mm. not it's not a straight ahead pop thing, is it by any means? Well, Sting Sting is always that that this is like a projection of Sting's mind. Yeah, you know, Sting's is always he feel home everywhere in the world and. Uh, and uh, he likes to have inputs. He likes to, uh, to uh, also to uh, to educate his listeners also and tell them stories and um, give them new colors and new uh, dimensions. Um, uh, he is open-minded, and you can you can hear it in his music. I can, I can imagine you just fitted in beautifully without any transition. It was just almost meant to be, I guess. Well, it was beautiful and uh, it's mm -hmm. funny, uh, it was, uh, I didn't have, I wasn't excited, thank God, and I didn't know nothing about his music. Yeah. And the lovely thing, he and Kippa, they gave me really the freedom to choose whatever I want. Yeah. So I was, uh, I was really having fun with, uh, with the music. Sure. And, and I remember I never repeated any, any take that's, that's that's the whole the whole the whole takes are first takes. Really? That's yeah, the incredible. whole album. Wow. Yeah, it's it's funny. I, I I recall that. I still remember that. There's a track on there. Um, oh, there is no rose of such virtue. I think the track is called. Yeah. From memory, and um, there's some you play some beautiful stuff on there. You really do. It's just tasteful. Um, it's not overly loaded with stuff, but just, yeah. just, just lovely. Um, yeah. Just a great album. So Sting, yeah. Sting, over the years, you've done so much with him, haven't you? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, he, he, when he goes on tour, well, first, first you have to know that someone like him, he, he starts every, every time. At least uh, back at the years, there was like, first of all, a promotion tour. Yeah, and that promotion tour was, if I can really remember, at least six months. Right. You know, promoting the album, the new singles, and stuff. And then we had to do the 
DVD recording. And, and this one we did a bit in his, uh, in his uh, huge uh, castle in, uh, uh, it's called Lake House. Oh, and yes. the other bit, yeah, the other bit we did in, uh, in Malibu in LA. And um, exactly. And then after the DVD recording, then we went on tour. We had like a proper rehearsal for three weeks in Miami. And then we went like one and a half years, maybe almost. Yeah, that it, it kind of rhythm going three or four weeks, having a uh, um, week or two off, and then back on the road for more four or six weeks and back and forth. And yeah. how, obviously, we know he has impeccable taste in musicians, including yourself. Um, and drummers, he has the very best of the yes. best. So I'm guessing you've played at the moment with, with, with Keith Carlock, with Vinny, yeah. with Manu. Yeah. Uh, yeah. is, is there any others I've missed out of that? Um... Well, well, I, 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 I did play sometimes as a guest few bits with, uh, with Apple Boreal Jr. also. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So... Yeah, but... Some of the very best in the world. I mean, and does it, um, depending on the drummer, does it change the way you approach things or is it pretty much the same? Of course, time? of course, totally, of course. The, the, the contrast is so... It's so big. I mean, if you play with uh, his mighty Vinny Colaiuta, you don't hear the click. He's so on a yeah. lot, pretty insane. Hmm. And uh, you have that sound of him. You choose your instrumentation, your colors differently. Okay. And your timing, you have to adjust differently to him and the way how he approach the micro timing and, and sometimes the way how he play um, when he goes on the right and uh, give you the feeling he's going to be faster, but nothing is moving. It's just the, the feel of it. Yeah. And you have to be careful. It's a pretty kind of similar to Keith Carlock. This is more the American school approach. Yeah. But then you have Manu. Manu is a painter. Manu, is he doesn't care about time. or he does, the, the time is solid there. Yeah. But he, he prefers to invest more in the color and the painting. Yeah. And, you know, and then you have to, if you play with someone like him, you have to, uh, to think a lot about the space you're going to leave. And, yeah. and I do also by dramas when they, for me, the, those dramas are, are the best. If I play, sometimes I have to think if, if the drummers want to do his field, so I better leave that space and uh, let him say his story or his, uh, his point. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and, and it's kind of really respect and the same for them. I mean, I, I had this discussion with Vinny many times and so uh, loving and respectful always. And, and Vinny, it's, it's always extra fun because he is, he is more fun backstage with uh, getting warm. And sometimes, sometimes, uh, sometimes we, we hang together and and practice together and he loves be getting introduced to different rhythms from other parts of the world you know it's, it's, Vinny, do you know this this rhythm from morocco or from cameroon or from uh, south of spain and uh, show me and i would play something and he would re practice on top of that rhythm and we had always fun and smiling like kids like kindergarten basically <laughs> <laughs> oh what a job what a job, eh? That's incredible. <laughs> oh, dear me. I mean, obviously, you've done so much with, with Sting over the years. But when, when you did the Symphonicities, symphon I hope I pronounced that correctly. I always struggle with that. Yeah, word. totally correct. Symphonicities, yeah. Symphonicities. This was, this was 2010, 2011. Now, I, I think I've got this correct, but there was no um, a drummer on there. It was percussion, just, just percussion, yeah. am I right? Yeah. Mm. Now then, is that, do you have to approach things very differently? Because I feel on that album and on the Live in Berlin DVD and album, there's a different kind of energy. It's, uh, yeah. and, and I like it. I don't know how to describe it, but it's a different yeah. sort of energy. It's, it's really, it's really uh, very, very uh, well asked because this is a really important question. The, the challenge we had there, at the beginning, we were two percussion players there. And uh, for Sting, it's very, very important 
groove. He needs a groove. Yeah. He, he, he started the, the, the whole thing with uh, kind of uh, more classical and, uh, you know, kind of open. Yeah. But then he realized after a few days, he, he needs a groove. He needs a pocket. So there you go. You are, you have, you're having an orchestra. And then sometimes with drums, it's very loud. And then the challenge was how to play those grooves without uh, being too loud. Mm. And um, since I was already starting, since I always worked with Dominic Miller, and I always used that concept of, I call it hybrid setup, yeah. um, using cajon as a bass drum, not with the pedal, but with my hands, so I can control the dynamic. And, uh, and being busy with the right hand, with backbeats and some other sounds, and it did work. It did really work. And uh, for some songs also, we had to keep the, 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 the identity. So that's why we used the samples. Hmm. So uh, it was very challenging to play with an orchestra and uh, also using click yeah. and playing with the click. Hmm. And uh, I, I learned a lot from that tour. And I learned also the the, the most important communication you have to have as a, someone who's playing time with an orchestra. So you have to know where the, where the, 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 the persons, the key persons in orchestra, the, the concert maestro, the first violin player, it's, it's the most important guy because the whole orchestra falls with his, sure. you know, bow movement and you have to go to him and, and make sure you guys are together and then also you have the colleagues the classical percussionists on the top you have the bass players and you have the cellist section you have to keep from each section the first player in your eyes and uh and tell them to 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 be more careful about the time yeah. because stink he needs his time he's he he loves it. i mean if i tell you his his statement he's he always says uh, I am very insecure and I need good people on stage to uh, make me feel secure. So he doesn't ask you what to do, but you have always to go through all the options to make him feel good because it's all about him, yeah. basically. We, we musicians, we dedicate ourselves to put all the energy and dedication to that person in the front who's, uh, who's trying to get a message across to the people. So our job is to make him feel a hundred percent comfortable during the whole gig yeah. don't let him down whenever you have like some sections where no time is happening make sure i do now like i learned his body language i know when he feels comfy and if he doesn't feel comfortable he start to to uh, to move differently so you have to know that language as well and to offer him the time before he sings and uh, to keep him in your eyes and your sight and, uh, and 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 give dedicate yourself to that person. It's a it's a it's kind of a job as a, a side man. Yeah. So you, it's not a, a kind of a sit back and relax in your own comfort zone. You're constantly your eyes are everywhere and ears are everywhere. Yeah, and especially with him. And uh, yeah, because if something doesn't happen really right in the time, he doesn't he doesn't try to understand where the problem comes from. He just turns to, to whoever is playing the, the rhythm. Yeah. So you, you are in charge, basically, and make sure everything works. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it, that, the, the album, it doesn't, and, and I mean this as a compliment, it doesn't sound like there's click involved. It appears to yeah. move and ebb and flow, which, which is what you want, really, from music. Um, yeah. and, I, and I remember at the time when it came out, and I was blown away by it. I mean, the arrangements are incredible. Yeah, uh, and um, ah, uh, was it? Ah, uh, what I forgot the other percussionist's name, David uh, Cosson. Cosson, David yes. Cosson, yeah, you worked yeah. incredibly yeah. well together as well. Fantastic player, great. Uh, you have to see him playing all the classic stuff, you know, the the temporary, uh, uh the, how do you call it? Um, it's, it's very modern classical way how he plays and uh, and the, his solos and his virtuosity and unbelievable mm, mm. wonderful guy was it did you have a very clear idea 
um, even in rehearsals, what you were both going to do. I mean, did what you play, does it kind of, do you swap it between you and say, well, I'll kind of provide more of a backbeat on this and you can, you know. Yeah, we're, we had to do it on the go because uh, when he started the tour and I was still involved in with other artists okay. and I joined in basically in the promotion tour okay. and uh, we kind of swapped. Uh, I, I, I was lucky because I, it was 2010 and I started to work with Sting 2003. So I had kind of little bit of ideas where, what does he want? And you have to keep your mind away from the studio. Mm. You, don't, you don't think, oh, this is what happened in the studio. Sting doesn't work like this. Yeah. Sting is always in the now. Like he, what happens now, it's, it's what happens now. Studio, it, it doesn't mean anything. And just go with his mood and what he needs, what kind of support and which part of the song. And just give him um, a, a feel like you are always behind him and you stick with his words and you put your accent somewhere in those words in, in such a way you don't bother him. That's mm. all. I mean, mm. on his behalf, it's quite a brave move to go on a huge world tour with an orchestra without a, a drummer. Um, yeah. Obviously... That's all he's ever done with, you know, from Stuart Copeland through all these incredible drummers that he's used yeah. Omar over the years. And then all of a sudden to have no drummer, um, mm. but obviously two fantastic percussionists. So, you know, and you've explained how that works brilliantly. Yeah. And, but yeah. it's just it's, it's, a, it's an interesting thing to just drop the drums all of a sudden, you know. Sorry, Vinny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we had we had some problems also. And uh, we had if you're. If you would see the YouTube, uh, we had two conductors for that tour. Yeah. The first conductor, he was more, um, don't need, you don't need to give me the time. I, I can manage to remember the timing. And, uh, and uh, when I came and joined the, the tour at the beginning, I said, no way, because we have samples. We, we don't give you the time. The click give us the time as, yeah. as a machine because we are human being and... Uh, and we, we do have sometimes not a perfect perception of the timing because we are human beings. That's fine. Yeah. And uh, that's why we use those machines to help us. And the problem with uh, you have someone singing, you have to give him the right tempo. Otherwise, he, his lyrics won't fit. Yeah. And it's about breathing. And so this is so important for Sting. And he has always the click in his ear because he feels more secure if the click is running because he knows, oh, I'm not going to be stressed with, with, uh, with singing. Uh, but then we had an, another uh, conductor. She, she was a lady from Japan and uh, she was like, yeah, of course, give me time. What I do, I get it uh, else. You have to give me that time. And it was really easy. And the orchestra, they were so trained back then, after a while, once you count in, they're in, they don't even need to watch the conductor. They know the song, they were young, they know about pop music. Yeah. And uh, it was really fun. It was, it was fun with those guys, the, the London Symphonic Orchestra. So I'm guessing then um, it was just uh, the, the, the band and the uh, the conductor on on click and the orchestra weren't I guess they were just following. Yeah. Wow. That's, exactly. That's incredible. Yeah. yeah. That's that's Ooh. that's that's the way how it was. Wow, that's incredible. And I have to ask you as well. Um, yeah. It's it was a huge show. Obviously, um, Sting's sixtieth birthday party. Yeah, <laughs> that must have been a fun. I, I guess it was a, more of a week than a day. I guess there was quite a lot of rehearsal involved. Well, I know there was. I've seen seen some footage of the rehearsal. That must have been an intense, an intense week. I guess it is. It is. Well, some of the artists they didn't appear to the to the rehearsals. Some of them appears, but we we were like there. Can't remember. It was 2012. I remember that. We were, this was in New York. Yeah. And we were at the SIR rehearsing with Vinny Colaiuta and fun as always. And uh, yeah, we had like what, three or four days rehearsing? Okay. And then uh, see someone like Stevie Wonder, he didn't come to the rehearsal, he just, yeah. just joined in in the stage. 
<laughs> Confidence. <laughs> He's, he's, yeah. done it, he's done it all before, hasn't he? Let's be honest. <laughs> he created it. <laughs> wow. Uh, it, I mean, it must have been a joy, though. I mean, I mean, Stevie Wonder, yeah, it's just... He's, yeah, I mean, when it comes to legends, I, I mean, how it was, that must have been... I, I guess when you're playing, it doesn't affect you. You don't... It's just another gig. But in, in the back of your mind, you must be thinking... Stevie Wonder there, you know. Yeah, man, yeah, man. I, I had the pleasure because he is such a fan of Sting and Sting is such a fan of him. So yeah. we had the pleasure of him being on stage a few times. Yeah. But uh, I think this was the first time uh, in, in that 60th birthday when he when he uh, when he sang that song Fragile. Oh, beautiful. And I was I was watching uh, to Vinny and I was like, what? Help me. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's, wow, I mean, you're concentrated, but even on stage, you're really full concentration, but still that guy hits you and you, you, you find yourself having tears in your eyes. Just going to say the same. You, you, yeah. you wouldn't you'd yeah. be forgiven for shedding a tear during that because it's just incredible. And, and, and the guy who, um, who, who really surprised me was Robert Downey Jr., um, <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. He sounds a bit like Sting, actually. <laughs> yeah, me neither. Me neither. We were all surprised. Yeah, I, I, when he walked on, I thought, okay, uh, it's Iron Man. <laughs> yeah, Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> um, wow, just incredible. Um, must have been a fun gig. He's he's uh, amazing. That energy and I mean, uh, you know, some. Actors, they are frustrated singers, and some singers are frustrated actors. Exactly. <laughs> I, I, and the, well, he's certainly got both. Both camps are great, aren't they? Amazing, amazing. And Rufus, you have Winbright, if you remember him. Yes. He was really yeah. one of uh, also great surprise. Uh, Lady Gaga on on that song, King of Pain, and and we had Mary G. Blige uh, for Whenever I See Your Name, and we had Billy Joel. <laughs> that night i mean you have to look at the backstage when when i came w we were closed the hotel was close to the to the venue to the bacon theater and thank god i was walking you know because <laughs> the whole street it was it was so mess because yeah. everyone knew you know you have all those and also um um bruce springsteen also yes. was there remember yeah, man, it was the crowd in backstage. It was a huge challenge to to get into your rehearsal room. It was, and of course, it's not only those superstars, but the superstars musician like Herbie Hancock, of and uh, Christian McBride was playing the upright bass. Man, it was yeah. fun. Also, it was, yeah, Chris Boaty as well was there. I believe Chris Boaty uh, and uh, and uh, um, uh, Marsalis. Also. Oh right, okay. I didn't we didn't realize it was there. Yeah, he was he was playing on uh, on those songs with Herbie Hancock, Brantford Masalis. Yeah, he was there also. Wow. Beautiful, beautiful memories. That that concert is just. Do you know? Uh, what? Yeah. At that point, when you're sat there, um, you know you're playing for all these incredible people. You must think back to your beginnings, you know, in Morocco, and think. Wow! Yeah, I'm glad. I'm kind of glad I stuck with this. It's it's yeah. work, you know. Yeah, um, well, you're you're totally right because uh, I uh, I have it every time actually when I go on stage after the concert when I when you are on on your own in your hotel room, you just feel gratitude. Like thank God I thank you for making me live in my dreams and and doing this. It's it's just. Just amazing. No words for it. Just gratitude. It's. It's. Do you ever manage to um, to sneak some of the traditional Moroccan rhythms into into some of the into Sting's work? Do you? Is there? Is there? Is there lots? Of, I know. I, I know very little about it. I'm afraid. Is there? Is there a traditional Moroccan style? Yeah. 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 Well, uh, uh, lots of lots of uh, in Morocco. Basically, if you. If you travel for 15 kilometers, the rhythm would change. Oh, wow. Morocco is such a rich country. In, um, in, in, uh, lots of people, they don't know that yet, but I'm trying to work on that and teach it every time I go 
and teach at the universities like in Berkeley, in Valencia, or, uh, or some universities here in Germany, I always put that as a priority number one to let the people know about those rhythms. Uh, at some at some level, of course, you can you can you can true at him some uh, um, some patterns and but there are some kind of patterns which are not really um, compatible. Yeah, sure. With with the music, but then you have to be creative and maybe not use uh, typical instruments, but use the rhythmical phrase yes. with with instruments he knows. You know. Sure. It, yeah. I just think it's nice to have a little bit of the flavor of where you're from. You're bringing a, a piece of you with you, aren't you? And I, yeah, I, I, yeah. I like the idea of that. I really do. Yeah, um, yeah well, it's very important. The identity, if, if each one of us uh, wants, um, or every artist wants to be recognized as such. Mm. So the, the stronger your identity is, the more people can recognize you. And, mm. uh, and um, I really put so much attention on that. On that aspect, yeah. to to bring my my touch, my color, my piece of spices, always in the music when I record. Mm, I like that. And is yeah. there a, is there a particular instrument that's associated um, with Morocco more than any other, perhaps any hand percussion or? Yeah, well, darabuka is one of them. Yeah, you know the hand yes. uh, uh, instrument darabuka or derbuka, like the Moroccan says. And uh, you have also that kind of tambourine with the skin. Yeah. We call it tar. Uh, some of the Oriental people call it rik. Okay. And uh, we have something called bendir, which is frame drum with the snare inside. Oh, yeah. I I've heard you yeah. play that quite a lot. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, um, that's, I, you like that drum, don't you? I can tell. I like I <laughs> like it a lot. It's yeah. kind of the first snares in the world. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. And uh, and of course you have the. the the metal castanet from Morocco, and you have bigger drums, and it's it's basically each style of music has, has its its own its own instruments also. Yeah, no, it's 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 really fascinating, and there's there's something I've always wondered with mm. uh, with percussion. How do you when you're hearing a piece of music for the first time, and you've got literally, you know, a room full of instruments to choose from? <laughs> yeah. how, what makes you think right I, I think this needs this is there yeah. is it trial and error or is it is it just it's it's more instinct it's more knowing the story behind the music and what the the, the person who's composing the song what kind of emotions he wants to to uh, to uh, to to bring over yeah. and uh it's more about the story yeah so you can't if the story is a little bit sad you can bring some instrument which, which uh, give you a, a more the happiness or yeah. kind of a funny sound. You know, you can't do this. So yeah. you have to know what is the song about, what's uh, the message the artist wants to uh, to get across, and uh, and you can be creative. I mean, I I like the fact that people give me that freedom, and uh, I'm so grateful for that. Sting never told me basically what to play. And uh, even here, you know, when I work with, the, I live in Cologne and we have this famous WDR big band. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, it's always conducted the most of the time with uh, um, lots of projects I do with them. It's with uh, Vince uh, Mendoza. Yeah. Oh. And even, even, even Vince Mendoza, man, it's just, yeah, you hear it, you do it. Incredible. I mean, like, thank you, Vince. I like the freedom because I can be creative and yeah, you know, it's, you it's fun. Your hands are never tied, and but the only the only downside, I guess, you have to bring so much stuff with you. Uh, it's yeah. not like your drummer; you bring your drums and maybe two or three snare drums and a bag full of cymbals. You've got. <laughs> no. Yeah, I know. I have I have five hundred square meters of room where my stuff is, and uh, and in Sting's house in Italy, some of it, and in in the in the storage in New York of Sting, another setup in London, another setup um yeah and here germany same thing i have uh, my own stuff but also the stuff which goes with the tours with such artists like sarah connor it's always in the production the whole setup i mean one day when when i retire and, and, and i get all that stuff back i don't know where to do it <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh dear me! And and be, before we before we wrap this up, do you have mm. um, do you have a favourite piece of equipment? If you could only keep one, do you have something that you would always go to? The the, the thing, I mean, I've heard you play yeah. frame drum, which is I, I think is fascinating and just yeah. a beautiful sounding drum. But I I would always take my my darabuka with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so it's a it's beautiful instruments and uh, these instruments I've been playing since I was a kid. So kind of. Uh, I have a strong connection to that instrument. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, Rani, have you got any any plans for the future? Anything coming up that that's that's interesting and exciting that you can talk about? Obviously. Well, I uh, I uh, through that pandemic, I was trying to uh, bring my teaching in form of videos, and I'm working on them. And once I get so much units, I will put them online. But also, it seems to be like the last two weeks, the, the phone is ringing, the emails are getting busy, and I, it looks like already we'll be able to play in front of the people in August, wow. cross fingers. Yes. And uh, I have a tour with a singer called Sarah Connor, and I uh, have with Dominic Miller a few uh, gigs and uh, upcoming tour in next year. And yeah, it's uh, gratefully busy. Fantastic. Well, look, um, the first percussionist we've had on, and it's been an absolute honour to have you on with us. So thanks so much, Rani. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Matty. It's really a pleasure to be with you and to share the time with you. And thank you for the invitation. And I'll see you soon. I hope so. <laughs> thanks, Rani. Take care. Bye -bye. Thanks. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. There we go.